Tonight on America's Hope, we focus on Israel, America's strongest ally in the Middle East. What's at stake for their future? America's Hope starts now. From the NTD Global Headquarters, I'm Kelly Wright, and this is America's Hope. Thank you for joining us this hour. We do hope that you're safe and well wherever you are, taking care of yourself and your family because you matter. What matters a lot to America is what's going on in the Middle East with regard to our strongest ally there, Israel. People are quite concerned, especially when here in America we see the uproar on college campuses, and the rise in anti-Semitism, and some people actually chanting, death to Israel and death to America. So tonight, we're going to drill down on that. We'll hear from Pierre Rehov, who lives in Israel. He's a journalist, and he's produced a new documentary about what's going on. His documentary is called Pogroms. We'll discuss that with him and the historical aspect of what Israel is up against with regard to its enemies. And then we'll also hear from award-winning journalist for the Washington Times, Cheryl Chumley, who spent some time in Israel after the October 7th, 2023 attacks on the kibbutzim and the city Starot in Israel along the Gaza border. Let's get started. And joining me now is Pierre Rehoff. He is a journalist. He is someone who's been able to be on the ground in Israel. And what we're going to talk about tonight with Pierre is the horror of the October 7th attack on southern Israel uh, being surpassed only by what followed on October 8th, the cold indifference by most of the international community, followed by the irrational condemnation of Israel and the eruption of well-planned anti-Israeli and anti-Semitic demonstrations on the campuses of elite universities and in the streets of major cities around the world. Uh, Pierre, you're a documentary filmmaker. You've done stories before on uh, the insidious evil that swirls around radical Islamic terrorism, and Hamas is one of those terrorist groups. And then you have Hezbollah to the north. You also have the Houthi rebels uh, over in, in Yemen. Uh, and, and all of this is being, of course, uh, funded by Iran. Now you have a new film coming out called Pogr uh, Pogroms. Talk to me yeah. about that, because it goes back to what people may or may not remember about the Holocaust during World War II. Uh, definitely, and first of all, I'm very happy to be on your show and be able to talk about all these matters, because here in Israel, uh, everybody, we are a big family, and everybody is basically suffering it's in, in its own uh, blood and, and flesh of what is happening, for instance, to the hostages who have been taken to Gaza, and uh, a week ago, six of them were murdered uh, deliberately by Hamas. And uh, as you said, you know, even though what Hamas did is beyond whatever human beings can imagine in their worst nightmares, we are talking of entire families were being massacred, babies were burned alive, children were beheaded, women were raped by sometimes 50 up to 60 guys gang raping them, and 1,200 people lost their lives, all them innocent people, plus, you know, that we had a couple of hundred uh, hostages taken to Gaza. And in the meantime, at the same time, uh, they fired thousands of rockets, deliberately targeting innocent civilians within Israel. The rockets target us as civilians in Israel. In the meantime, when Israel is retaliating, they try to avoid civilians. And you are right to say that something which is in a way harder to imagine and to 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 accept is not only did they committed the worst massacre since the holocaust but on the top of that the next day in the streets of new york and washington and paris and london and berlin people were parading not to condemn hamas for having beheaded babies and burned alive entire families no they, paraded in the street of New York to condemn Israel for defending its population. 
and we know what is behind it. And I didn't know the whole story before I made this documentary that you just talked about, pogroms, and the S is between parentheses, because there was one pogrom on October 7, but there were many other pogroms before. Not only did Muslims uh, do what they did on October 7, but it was not the first time. In Israel itself, 1921, there was a pogrom in Hebron. So tens of people were murdered the same way. Uh, in, uh, in, uh, in 41, there is a Muslim pogrom of Jews in Baghdad called the Faroud, and they murdered the hundreds of people the same way they did on October 7. But forget about the Jews. The Fatah of, of Yasser Arafat and now Mahmoud Abbas, when they went to Lebanon, they massacred Christians. There was a famous massacre in Damour, which was a Christian town in Lebanon, where 520 Christians were massacred by the men of Yasser Arafat, meaning the men of Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian Authority today. 527. What did they do to them? The same thing they did on October 7. They beheaded babies, they burned families alive, they gang raped women, and one thing they love to do is when they find a pregnant woman, they open the womb, and they take the fetus out, and in front of the mother, they kill the fetus. That's what they've done one time here in Israel, in one of the kibbutz, but they've done that many times to the Christians in the Moor. So yeah, talking about horror, you know, you have, there is no limit, but I think no matter what those Nazis have been doing, the fact that Qatar is spending tens of billions of dollars to pervert all of the American system of education, as we have been doing for decades, and the result being that people parading in the streets of, of the campuses and, you know, in the campuses and the streets of the cities and all that. Why? These kids don't know anything about the Middle East. They don't really care for the Palestinians. We cannot even put their fingers on the map to say where is Palestine and where is Israel. And when they, when they shout from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. In their mind, they don't even understand. It means erasing the map of Israel and killing 10 million people, which is worse than what happened in the Holocaust. This is what they are doing again and against the same people once more, against the Jews. And this is, in Israel, certainly one of the things which is really touching us the most. You know, Pierre, uh, you, you've been living there for many years. You once lived in France, and then you moved uh, back to Israel. And in our last discussion, discussion, which was several months ago, on the yeah. heels of what took place October 7th, 2023, you described how you had gone undercover speaking with many uh, Palestinians and, and really being accepted by them because they thought you were one of them, uh, but then you were able to discover the Hamas leadership and what Hamas, is, uh, what their intent was and has always been, which is to uh, drive uh, Jewish people from the river to the sea in Israel. But let's go back to October 7th, 2023. Sure. Because those attacks on the kibbutzim as well as the city of Sterot, they not only attacked and killed Jewish people, but they killed Muslims, they killed Christians, uh, they killed uh, people representing more than 20 nations. Uh, yet, you know, in your in your new documentary, it seems the world has forgotten that or overlooked that. Oh, they did. They did big time. They don't understand, for the world is just Palestinians trying to be free from Israeli occupation. Maybe they went too far this time, but bottom line, it's like, it's not only the people of the streets, it's Guterres, the, 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 the head of the United Nations, instead of condemning, just condemning what happened on October 7, he had to say it didn't happen uh, in a vacuum. Let's talk about the context. What context? Who allows you to go in my house, burn my wife alive, and kill my children, even if I have been kind of occupying your garden next door, it doesn't allow you to do that. There is no excuse for doing something like that. Hi, everybody. I hope you're enjoying this episode so far of America's Hope. If you'd like to see it in its entirety, just click on the link below. Thanks for watching.